Welcome to the End User Report. This is Clarence. And I'm Jamal. This is the podcast where we don't suffer from bacon neck. Well, not both of us. <laughs> and man boobs. I'm leaving that one alone, dude. <laughs> Today's podcast, we're going to talk about the Motorola Zoom. Um, but like we do many times, we're actually going to start from a response from last week's podcast. Last week, we talked about the NGP or the PSP2. Uh, cool Classic writes in, you guys actually think 299 is a bad price for what the PSP2 has to offer. Wow. The freaking iPhone was five to $600 when it launched. Jamal, your thoughts on that one? He thinks it's a bad price? He I says he's saying you guys actually think 299 is a bad price. Yeah, I think it is, considering that you can buy, I don't know, a PS3 for less. <laughs> well, yeah, you can actually <laughs> buy a PS3 for the same price. You know, here, I got something... I mean, I mean, if you're trying, if you're trying, is he trying to compare it to the iPad? He was actually is trying to say the iPhone was five dollars iPhone, but well, that's that's comparing. Uh, I mean, that's comparing apples to oranges in a way because the PSP two is not meant to be a phone. It's meant to be a game portable gaming system that maybe supposedly you might be able to make it use it as a phone, and is that hasn't been confirmed yet. So. Apples to oranges, in my opinion, so I don't think you can make a, a, a good comparison on that. Yeah, it does kind of seem like comparing a Escalade to a Prius. Not really in the same ballpark. Uh, all I'm going to say on it is you can get a PS3 for the same price. If you want to, Sony, if you want to make a PS3 Lite, which it seems like is what they're trying to do, make it cost less. But let's get into it. Yes. <laughs> so Motorola uh, did announce that they are going to release the much-anticipated uh, Motorola Zoom tablet, and that's on February 27th. This was a device that caught a lot of people uh, by surprise at CES 2011 and actually even won a Best in Show, and this was a award show that was just... And I had also mentioned it in our CES um, podcast. Yeah, make sure you watch that. Subscribe. Yep. Um, Self-promotion. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, the, the CES this year was just flooded with tablets, and this thing was one of the standouts. The specs break down like this. Uh, one gigahertz dual core processor, so multitasking, and graphically this thing is going to be tight. Also, it's going to handle streaming very well, at least that's the theory. 10-inch uh, touch display, so pinch and zoom. Pinch to zoom. Very nice. Uh, also, records in 720p and displays in 1080p. Very nice. 1 gig internal RAM, 32 gigs of storage. It is 3G and 4G capable, so that's always a good thing. Mm -hmm. Front and rear facing cameras, so you are going to be able to do video conferencing. Flash 10.1 support. I'm not going to mention iPad right there. Um, <laughs> HDMI ports, uh, USB 2.0, and it weighs about 26 ounces. And just so you know, yes, that is heavier than the iPad. Yeah. Uh, most important thing I think about this device is the fact that it's going to be running Android 3.0, nickname Honeycomb. It's going to be the first actual device that is going to be running that. Uh, and I think the most important thing about that is it's a tablet-specific OS. So it shouldn't suffer some of the problems that the uh, Galaxy S tab ran into. So, Jamal, what are your thoughts on... My thought is uh, an Android tablet that actually decided to make a 10.1 inch screen. Wow, amazing. Because I guess they realize that people don't really want to watch a movie in seven inches. They want to watch a little it. sarcasm there. <laughs> Just a little, I think Steve Jobs said something about, nobody wants to watch a movie in seven inches. I think Steve might have been right on that one. Not that I'm an Apple fanboy or anything, don't, don't get the wrong idea. <laughs> yeah, this is an end gadget, folks. <laughs> um, but the, I think the question mark, and we talked about this earlier, is the honeycomb. I don't think honeycomb has really proven itself yet as the Android OS. To, uh, maybe when newer updates come out, perhaps. But it'll be interesting to see how Motorola and Google handle these updates. And the problem that... Android devices usually suffer is that they often get orphaned. Does that make sense? Kind of makes sense. Well, in other words, that um, Motorola may have updates, Google may have updates. Who's going to handle the updates? 
and a lot of times with Android devices is that there's so many that come out that they just they just drop it and people go to the next thing. So, what so basically, what you're saying is you're saying Google treats its software like Sega treats its hardware. Pretty much, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. I mean, it's a sad thing, and and that's the pro- that's the one problem that I know we spoke uh, a lot of times about the problem with Android. And uh, you yeah, remember Sega CD, folks? <laughs> That was horrible. But overall, I think it is going to be a good tablet. I think it is. The one thing I'm going to say about Honeycomb that I kind of like is the fact that it's more than just your phone OS on a tablet. It's not just having shortcuts and adding adding widgets onto a page. Uh, They actually have a new feature that's going to allow you to manipulate your apps in kind of a 3D carousel, almost like turnstile. Uh, so you can actually kind of maneuver it in like a 3D space, which I, I think is kind of neat. Uh, I don't think this is going to suffer the same display problems that we realized with the the mm-hmm. Galaxy S tabs, um, because well, that OS just wasn't made for. Yeah, that's uh, the thing. It wasn't, wasn't made really for a made. tablet. So. And another thing, I think Honeycomb um, is probably I would consider a real. Uh, smart device OS um, that is a good competitor to the iOS um, and uh, if the support is there if Google um, you know works well with the uh, manufacturers I can see a lot of success with this um, but unfortunately you need to have both the manufacturer and Google playing nicely with each other and for and what happens is that the user is the one that winds up suffering on that, um, a couple of things I do want to mention is that HP, Microsoft, Nokia, you guys are in this disconnect. The iPad has been out for six months now, and it's just like you're just chasing after its coattail. I don't know what what are they eating for breakfast that they don't understand their customers. It's just like now they're bringing out a tablet that's 10.1 inches, and the iPad's been 10.1 inches since the get-go, and then they realize, oh, people do actually want to see bigger screens when they watch a movie on an entertainment tablet. Um, well, I mean, that's a common problem. I mean, that's just how companies operate. We, we've seen yeah, this with video game consoles where we came out, and all of a sudden it was like, hey, you know, there's something to that motion control system. You yeah, know, the Xbox and place it. Let's do it. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it's such a... It's, this disconnect is, is amazing, and how, you know... Well, I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, another thing is really when it comes to tablets, it's what fence are you straddling? Are you are you going to be the Android fence? Are you the iOS fence? Or are you going to be on the, the RIM side of it? Which I know RIM hasn't really put anything out. A lot of it is still vaporware. But, um, you know, that's really, in, in, in essence, the hardware is nice. The hardware is going to be the same. They're going to have pretty much the same processors, same screens. Um, it all is manufactured from probably the same place in Taiwan somewhere in some cave where 200 Chinese folks are hanging. <laughs> no, You're scratch on that. that one, buddy. <laughs> getting paid $2 a, a day. But the hardware is the same. However, it's the OS, folks. It's the OS that's going to make the, the, this definitive uh um, choice for a user and right now the iOS just makes sense when you're working at tablets honeycomb hopefully this will be the answer for the Android tablets we'll, have to we'll, wait we'll see but I'm glad you brought that up because let's get to the million dollar question that we really haven't talked about yet is this really gonna rival the iPad no no and the reason why is because it's it's unfortunately it's Motorola well, yeah, that's I think brand recognition has a lot to do with it here. Mm-hmm. I think there are a lot of people who are going to buy these and not sure what they're going to use it for, but they're going to buy an iPad just because it's got a piece of fruit on it. Yeah, uh, I think Apple at this point, they're at the point where like all we need to do is put an I in front of another word and we can put a product to it and it'll sell. Probably could. I mean, that's, that's, but, you that's know, the point that it's gotten to. I think Apple spends millions of dollars understanding that market and, you know, producing a product that 
I don't know, the customers want. Well, they do that, and not, <laughs> also they back it. I've seen a yeah. million iPad commercials. How many Galaxy S Tab commercials have you seen? <sighs> not many. I've seen about three. Yeah, I think I saw one. And on top of that, um, with Motorola, I just want to get back with the Motorola thing. The products that they've been putting out, um, I've heard stories of where it's just it's not the, uh, what can I, how can I say it, uh, reliable. They've had to have its service and stuff. So we'll see how the Zoom comes out. Well, well let's hope the, the Zoom can turn things around, at least for Android tablets. I know the Galaxy S Tab at this point, last I looked, about 13% of these things are being returned back to the store because people are just unhappy. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it, I think the last report that I read it was somewhere nearing twenty percent, you know, including last month. So, you know what they need to do? They need to you need to buy an iPad, and then hack it and put honeycomb on it. Yeah, great. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you know what will happen? The, you, your boys will hear about it, and then they'll brick your device. Can't use it. For I know. Time. Oh well, it was worth a try. Look nice on the coffee table. Sure would. But uh, I think that does it for us. Yeah, at least right. as far as the uh, as far as the uh, Zoom tablet, we're waiting on it. We're gonna check it out. You know, we've had this discussion about Gadget Guy. We talked about Gadget Guy for the last three. Yeah, weeks Gadget there. Guy. What's the pricing? Six ninety nine. They're saying the pricing that I've heard rumored is anywhere from six ninety nine to eight fifty. I believe so. Oof, eight fifty. But uh, you know, it really doesn't matter because once the iPad two comes out, I think. It's yeah. just going to blow everything else out of the water. Unfortunately, because, again, they're chasing behind Apple. Well, that's kind of how it works these days. Apple makes something, and then everyone else follows suit. So, <sighs> Motorola. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I guess that does it for us with, uh, with Motorola. Um I didn't have anything for the end segment. I know you do, but I'm going to make my Super Bowl prediction. Your Super Bowl prediction. And it's really not a prediction. I want the Steelers to win because I can't stand the Packers because they beat my Bears. Yeah, Bears suck. Whoa, you know what? I want the Packers to win now. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your end segment going to be? And it's like, you know what, I'm going to stick with the Super Bowl picks and just say I hope the Steelers crush the Packers because, well, I'm a Steelers fan. What do you want? I want the Steelers to win, but I want Ben Roethlisberger to have a, a, a knee injury that will end his career. What is up with that? You're such a <laughs> hater. <laughs> I'm hating, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know maybe, why? You maybe, know why? Not, maybe not to end his career. But. We, we all know that Bears <laughs> fans hate quarterbacks because they haven't had a good one in 30 years. It's just so true. Breathe. Jim McMahon, come out of retirement. Jim McMahon? <laughs> Who's the wrong best with you? quarterback that ever existed? He gave us a Super Bowl. Walter Payton <laughs> gave you a Super Bowl. What are you talking about? That Jim too. McMahon. Refrigerator Perry did it too. Richard Dent. <laughs> All right. Podcast. Over. Okay. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>